Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Well, here's a headline. Bitcoin set for a 580% rally this year, says Nexo Managing Partner. So, of course, the question is, will this be the real rally? Is this what's going to uh, really propel things? And, uh, you know, I, I still suspect that, uh, of course, look, the all-time high that we saw from XRP uh, in, in January of 2018 of uh, close to four dollars I don't think that's going to remain the all-time high forever I really firmly do not believe that and I think that uh, it's likely I, I just you know take it for what it's worth this is not financial advice but I suspect that Bitcoin's going to rally in a major way prior to X uh, Bitcoin will rally prior to XRP rallying in a rather substantial way uh, and I say that primarily because Bitcoin just leads the market there. But uh, to me, it's all a coming here. So I'm going to share with you opinions from a number of chart analysts in this video. I'm going to run through this piece also. Uh, I've got another one talking about just the concept of uh, Q1 and Q1, um, sorry, Q1 and Q2 uh, price rally. Uh, is that what's going to happen in 2020? Take a look at historically what's happened in terms of price action over specific time periods. But um, before we get to going any further here, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and if you're a fan of Ripple and XRP, well, thanks for stopping by. You must be a super cool person. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel to prove it. All right, so um, before jumping in, I also want to state, since I'm talking a lot about price in this video, I do not have a financial background. I am not offering financial advice. I just think this is a fun topic of conversation, and... Uh, don't buy or sell anything because of this video or anything that I say are right. And I really firmly mean that. Um, let's dig in. From a bullish take on the price of Bitcoin in 2020 to a new way to buy some of the leading crypto assets on Binance, here's a look at some of the stories breaking in the world of crypto. Let's jump into the big one. Co-founder and managing partner of the crypto lending platform Nexo says Bitcoin may hit $50,000 or higher this year. A 580% uh, a increase from its current price of $7,391. In an interview on Bloomberg TV, Antony Trenchev says his team believes Bitcoin's halving, which is set to happen in about four months, will be the catalyst. Can you believe that's only four months away? I remember talking about that in like May of last year, and it seems so far away, but here we are in January. So we're actually not going to have to wait that much longer to see what uh, what actually happens in terms of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency price action as a result. Now, that's going to be fun to watch and fun to talk about. Uh, in a new interview on Bloomberg TV, oh, I'm sorry, I had just read the part. Uh, here's, the, here's the quote. That's what I meant to read. So here's the quote from him. I think that very easily... We could see Bitcoin going up to $50,000 by the end of this year. We have our analysts at Nexo crunching the numbers and doing very substantial research, and it is just a hell of a ride. It's the halving coming up because the reward for miners are dropping. The last time this happened, Bitcoin rallied 4,000%, and it's been an incredible asset. It's uncorrelated to the overall market. It delivers... Uh, systematic asymmetric returns uh well that part i definitely agree with it's historically yeah there's been some dramatic uh retracements but uh historically look what it's done over the last decade millions of percent uh gains over the decade uh i would say that uh, asymmetric returns uh, pretty well sums it up right there uh Trinchev says he believes bitcoin's narrative has changed in the last few years instead of being the new form of cash he says bitcoin is emerging as a digital form of gold and he said quote the initial idea was we're going to pay for coffee with bitcoin but obviously that has failed to materialize womp womp i think the narrative now that is much more persuasive is that bitcoin is the new gold and we see confirmation like the turmoil that we have this um, this morning, Bitcoin is rallying on par with gold. And in terms uh, just of sheer price action, if Bitcoin is the new gold and it just captures 10% of the total market cap of gold, which is around $8 trillion or, or $9 trillion, there will be Bitcoin at $50,000. Okay, well, uh, digital gold, the concept of cryptocurrencies being used as digital gold makes a bunch of sense to me, but uh, I still think utility matters. I don't, I don't know if you can just say, hey, this exists and so many other coins could do the same thing. None of them are getting used, but hey, store of value because reasons? 
I don't know about that. I, I can see I can see cryptocurrencies being used as a as a store of value, the new gold, if you want to call it that. Fine, I'm cool with that. Uh, but only if there's <laughs> it's being used for something else. I just, I'm sorry. I just I don't know that I see this long term. And so why has it been able to do it for a decade? Well, because people don't know. Uh, which cryptocurrencies are going to stay in power, but I'm just saying, as, as other cryptocurrencies like XRP tend to get uh, eventually, well, now that XRP is getting used, but as, as that it happens with increasing regularity, that's where the money's going to flow. So, we'll see. But crypto as a, as a whole, as digital gold, yeah, conceptually still makes sense, I think. All right. Um, Bitcoin price bearish in January. Will Bitcoin price rally in the first quarter and second quarter of 2020? Well, historical monthly returns for Bitcoin price in January for the past five years has been negative. Uh, 2015 was the worst January with a loss of 27%, followed by 2018 when Bitcoin dumped 21.5%. Uh, last year, Bitcoin dropped 10% in the first month of the year, and, the, and only September has been worse on average over the past nine years. Uh, last year, Bitcoin made 85% but still underperformed compared to previous positive years. Five months, yeah, only 85% trying to get that in traditional markets. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's why crypto is so freaking nuts. What other asset class can you have 85% gains in one year and then still bitch about it? You know, <laughs> that took me. Oh, Lord. Anyway, uh, five months were bearish and aside from January. They all came in the second half of the year. Observing quarterly returns over the past six years shows that Q1 has been bearish for four of those years, with only 2017 and 2019 posting gains in the first three months of the year. That's still early days, but uh, Q1 2020 has started in the green, as noted by Skew Analytics here on Twitter. And uh, if you are looking at your screen, go ahead and... Uh, uh, read through that. It's it's kind of fascinating. Just looking quarterly, historically, and it just shows the data going back to 2014. Uh, but but interesting nonetheless. But if you are driving, do not look at the screen. That would be reckless. Your vehicle may become crashed into something. All right. Aside from the late 2017 bubble, Q2 has been the best quarterly returns for Bitcoin prices over the past six years. Only 2018 saw a negative value for April, May, and June. Uh, and of course, that was the most massive bear market in crypto history, right? Um, I mean, technically, there was like a, a three-year period where there wasn't uh, there weren't huge gains. I can't remember. I'd have to look back at a chart. But what, what, what I meant by what I said there is just the dramatic drawdown in terms of actual dollars. Uh, that was uh, rather substantial. Anyway, uh, last year, Q2 was the second best performing quarter uh, over the past six years, according to the SKU data. Uh, returns for the period were over 160%. The big question is, will history rhyme and yield solid gains for Bitcoin in the first half of 2020? Uh, the year is only four days old, but Bitcoin price has made a low to the high gain of 8% from 6850 to 7400 So to me, that's pretty much tr typical uh, cryptocurrency volatility there. But uh, since the beginning of the month, it has climbed 2.5% and has been trading sideways for, for six weeks. So it's a matter of time. Look, it's going to happen, and XRP is going to follow. But I still firmly believe, not financial advice, but I firmly believe that after the next parabolic run-up in price for Bitcoin, I don't know I don't know if it's going to be a week later, a month, or a half year, or whatever. Who knows? But XRP will move up. It's going to follow. Because, because, look, XRP... Is eventually because one day utility matters, and I get it. Next RP will be number one in market cap if, if nothing changes because utility actually does matter. Until that actually happens, though, my gosh, just keep rooting for Bitcoin. There's a reason that I don't mind tracking the the the, um, the, the price action of Bitcoin, even though I'm not actively buying Bitcoin, and it's because it's affecting my beloved XRP. <laughs> you know, that's pretty much it here. Now, um, take a look at this. Um, th now, this first tweet is from Magic. He's a chart analyst. Uh, rather notable and uh, this tweet I actually did share the other day but another chart analyst named Patty Stash ultimately responded so I, I want to read a couple uh, tweets from Magic that are, are a couple days old just so I can set the table here properly so Magic said this if I had to guess I would say there's probably a 90% chance that Bitcoin will retest the 200 week moving average in the low 5000s if that is broken I would say there's also a 90% chance that Bitcoin reaches 3000 
If that is broken, that would give it an 80 to 90 percent chance that Bitcoin plummets to twelve hundred dollars. And somebody responded to him writing, no way it would get to $1,200 unless some catastrophic news came out that completely crushes demand. And Magic responded, no news is needed. Bitcoin is virtually worthless right now. Nobody uses it. It's inconvenient and user unfriendly. It can't scale. It has no good fundamentals other than a widely volatile digital store value. And it is enormously inefficient, to say the least, I could go on. And, um, and by the way, he's, um, he is certainly pro XRP, by the way. Uh, now, Patty Stash, another trials responded to that. Altcoin rally. <laughs> Many of these new projects developed over the past couple years serve purpose and will change the way business is done forever. Exactly. And XRP, of course, is one of those. That's the, the most notable, most important one, in my humble opinion right here. And that's why, for me... Uh, I, I suspect I have an idea of the way that some of this is all going to pan out over the long haul. And so I am happy to acknowledge the potential of XRP in terms of real global adoption and changing the way that money moves around the planet. I'm happy to uh, invest in it, in, in it uh, today while most of the world has no clue or uh, has, has not spent the time researching it to understand why there's uh, an actual use case for all that good stuff. I'm happy to put my money in and then let people over time figure it out. And the price of XRP, I believe, will, again, substantially be higher than it is today. Now, uh, Sir Gordon Gecko, another XRP chart analyst, wrote this. Still playing out to give it less than a week. We'll see what happens. The market is unpredictable right now. And, uh, and so he's got the Bitcoin chart right here. And, um, and I recognize this pattern. This is called an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And I hate that I'm learning things. I don't, I don't, learning stuff sucks. No, I just, I don't want to, I don't ever want to be a, uh, a chart analyst, but, um, I, I read through enough of this stuff that I think some of it is unfortunately rubbing off to me. I just, I, I there's not enough room for that in my head. I, I need to reserve all that room for learning about fundamentals of XRP adoption and then uh, how, how it plays its role in the marketplace. But uh, anyway, so there's this inverse head and shoulders pattern, and um, that is typically a rather bullish indicator. So uh, Sir Gordon Gecko seemingly believes that, even though he said he's you know, unpredictable right now, quote-unquote, fine, that's fair enough, uh, but uh, more likely than not heading upwards. All right, uh, next here is a tweet from somebody named Bear in Sun who writes, um, at Mr. Level Up, who is a chart analyst in the XRP community, at Mr. Level Up, uh, is this the drop you were looking for? As XRP got down to um, 19 cents earlier today, and uh, he responded because he's he believes look that there's going to be at least one more dip before for the rally, and so he says no, a little more, uh, like back into 18 cents to 17 cents window. But he does seem to think, from what I've read from over the last few days, that once XRP gets down to that kind of price level, it's it's probably going to be like the last uh, you know quote unquote dip, if you will. Um, I think that's actually the word that, that he had used in the past anyway. And so um, here we go. Um, okay, and then he, uh, somebody responded, any guesstimate when we may start that, uh, may start that drop? And uh, Mr. Level Up responded, looks like it wants to finish up this peak I'm watching. This weekend into Monday or Tuesday is, is, uh, is guess. I think he means is my guess. Um, if it doesn't close above 20 cents, we go back down and not moved on to the next pattern. So there you go. A little more information as far as the timing of this. All right. Now, here's a tweet from DIY Investing. Um, he's also a YouTuber. Uh, it, it's not an XRP channel, but he is pro XRP for, for sure. Um, and so he, here's something that he tweeted out. All of my altcoin YouTube videos do way better than any of the ones where I talk about Bitcoin. Are alts going to flip Bitcoin? And he's got a poll here. And for fun, um, I just clicked on because you can either write uh, click on um, alts will flip Bitcoin. The other option is Bitcoin is king. And so for fun, I just clicked and I wrote uh, alts will flip Bitcoin, which you know eventually <laughs> I don't know when. Uh, and the point uh, apparently uh, eighty point four percent of uh, respondents agree with me with four hundred thirty four votes. But um, somebody responded to him and wrote. I know Bitcoin was the pioneer, but it's all about speed and utility, my dude. Bitcoin will always be an appreciating asset, in my opinion. Whoever is on top will lead the market, but the number one position I don't think uh, respects anyone more than the other. DIY Investing responded to that. I'm not saying XRP isn't significantly faster and more efficient than Bitcoin, but I do believe Bitcoin is going to continue to be the front runner of the market. 
There's more adoption around Bitcoin than any other market, and I'm going to continue to ride that wave. Now, he's, he's coming from a trader perspective in terms of adoption of Bitcoin versus XRP, in terms of actual usage and utility, so I'm talking about uh, not just speculation. Obviously, um, XRP is putting Bitcoin to shame from that perspective, but he's, again, he meant it from a trader's perspective right there. Take a look at this, in fact. He writes this, DIY Investing writes, It's stupid not to hold Bitcoin. I hold majority in Bitcoin. And somebody named um, Never Up on Twitter responded, I thought you were all in XRP, to which DIY Investing responded, I'm all in on cryptocurrency. XRP is one of my biggest alt positions, but I always hold more Bitcoin than alts. And so again, he's coming at it from a trader perspective, though, uh, whereas I am not. I'm coming at it purely from an, uh, a fundamentals perspective because I'm not interested in trading. I don't want to try and time markets for a quick buck. I am here for the long haul. And so for someone like me, um, that's, that's what's more important, the actual utility and real-world adoption, which I'm seeing with XRP and not Bitcoin. But again, nonetheless, I, it's always interesting to hear other people's takes on things and the reasons that they're putting their money um, in the places that they do. But uh, that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.